Pixar probably has more toys lying around than the average office. I love toys so much, I never outgrew it. We love toys, this is kind of what we're all about. We surround ourselves with all sorts of toys from our childhood and the things that we had and the things we couldn't have. Chances are if you are a human being, there is a single toy that you can remember as being the most important toy you've ever had because it unlocked some aspect of your imagination. Toys are special. I consider them my friends. You create this sort of magic kingdom for yourself with toys. The thing that makes toys special is they will play whatever game the kid wants to play. That's something that you can't really get with anything else. In the old days, if you were bored on an airplane or in a hotel room or in the back of a car, you had this toy that made the journey with you and you were no longer in that car or on that airplane. You were in the world that you created with this toy. I started on the Lego pretty young. Major Matt Mason was my favorite toy of all time because he was in space. I was such a super shy kid, so I spent a lot of time in my room alone. It wasn't really about like, oh, make the thing on the box. You do that once and then you're like... It cost a dollar and 25 cents, which I bought with my own money. Setting up my Polly Pockets. You're usually sitting on the floor. And putting them all out in the mat and making them talk to each other. And then you pour the pile in front of you, and then you start building. Look how tiny they are. And four hours has gone by. I have maybe a hundred of these things in here. For me, it was all about spaceships. Meet Major Matt Mason, who tells man in space. There was a wire inside, and if that broke, well, then that arm could no longer do that. But I just worked it into his stories. I never really legoed with other people once in a while. You would place all of the houses on the mat. I mostly legoed alone. One, two, I mean, come on. This is like Transformers, but better. When I was a kid, I was scared of monsters. My dad brought this guy home and he said, the best way to fight a monster is with a monster. At night when I was sleeping, this guy was on watch for me. I was a big Barbie person. I imagined they were living an adult life. My Barbies had apartments and boyfriends and jobs. And I just thought that was like, you know, the most exciting thing. Now I'm like, oh, goodness, I have all those things. It's exhausting. My favorite was Beaker. He was always like, meh, beep, 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 beep. I laughed so hard at that because everybody else was talking and making jokes. And he was like, meh, beep, 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 beep. this is my favorite toy growing up. His name is Gigi. I would bring him everywhere. Just look at him. He's so cute. <laughs> No judgment. Most other adults tend to kind of grow out of toys, whereas Pixar people tend to kind of cling to it. I like to think that a lot of us animators and artists, we'd never really grew up. <laughs> Can an office be too full of toys? I don't think so. Yeah, it's actually hard to find a spot that we don't see a toy. I mean, you can see a toy everywhere. The Toy Story 4 War Room is where all the animators gather to talk about their shots. So we're asking that each one of them bring in a toy from their childhood or something that's sentimental to them. There's some history behind a toy. What is your toy story? It's full of toys and we actually use them. What does it feel like when he... It helps a lot to keep you inspired and to help in animation. There's a toy right there up on the bookcase. It's everywhere. Toys are the perfect protagonist because there's almost no one who hasn't had a relationship with a toy as a kid. We stay connected to toys because when you're a kid and you play with toys, you're creating these worlds and telling these stories. It's really not that different than what we do now, except for it's all in the computer and the toys are really expensive. Where's Forky? Through a series of unfortunate events, I lost all my toys. I was having a conversation with my wife about our first memories of life. For me, that was standing in my grandmother's driveway playing with this Mr. T doll. For my birthday, her and my kids, they got it for me. I remember being overwhelmed with emotion because I was back at my grandma's house and I could smell the smells and feel the feels. Once the eBay door opened, I've been able to track down so many great things. The thing I love about these designs is this is the guy who's gonna try to convince you of something upright and yellow, and then you've got this blue grumpy wedge. Almost everything about his design says no. 
It's like a treasure hunt. You're looking for this one thing and there's something really romantic about the flaws and to know that that toy has had a life. At some point in time, it was loved. Everybody has that specific thing in which a toy did something again and again and again in their lives. That's a very, very powerful bond that you never, ever forget. 